This morning, a local conference educating people on how to best care for a victim of a crime. Plus, Texas A&M secured a new ride, but the new van does way more than just ride around a college station. And the grass isn't always greener on the other side. That's what some College Station residents are saying about a new park. It's Wednesday, April 20th. Good morning, Texas starts right now. Connecting the Brazos Valley, this is Good Morning Texas. Thanks for waking up with us today. I'm Paige Ellenberger. It can take a village to get a victim of a crime the care and representation that they need. That's why the Hope Animal Assisted Crisis Response is holding a two-day conference at the Brazos County Expo Center. It's there people from all different kinds of professions learn the best ways they can assist a person who's been victimized. Uh, just learn how you don't realize you have an internal bias, like gender, race, um, it affects your practice. I'm a, I'm a nurse, so when you approach a patient, you have all kind of history of, of your biases from the past that you have to let go of. Today is the final day of the conference. Meanwhile, Texas A&M University is adding a new van to its fleet. This one has a vital purpose, though. It detects chemical air pollutants in real time. Through a collaboration between the A&M School of Public Health and the Superfund Research Center, Texas A&M is now the proud owner of an M Rapid van that responds to air pollutions and disasters. The new ride is equipped with highly sensitive instruments, allowing it to detect levels of harmful compounds that can be present after natural or man-made disasters. Not only can this van measure two of those very important VOCs, it can measure hundreds of different volatile organics in the atmosphere in real time. So we'll have the capability to inform first responders, to inform um, local jurisdictions of what those levels are, and then help to determine what those could mean for human health. Along with screening air quality after disasters, the M Rapid van can also provide real-time air screenings for communities throughout the Lone Star State. And A&M is set to receive a new park on campus with green spaces, an outdoor amphitheater, and some controversy. The new Aggie Park is supposed to plant over 100 invasive trees, including the Chinese elm. It's a non-native species. The Native Plant Society of Texas believes that these invasive trees will bring damaging outcomes to the environment around the park. However, some working on the project say the trees have been approved by the city saying they're suitable for the ever-changing College Station climate. The park is set to be completed in late 2022 or early 2023. Well, good morning. It is setting up to be a very breezy day here across the Brazos Valley. Out there right now, you can tell that humidity has worked in. And in some cases, we are dealing with a little bit of drizzle, so don't be surprised if you see some of that. That view being brought to us by our Clark Roofing Can there in Bryan. Look at the low cloud cover that's worked in. That humidity is on the increase. Now, I'll continue here as we go through the day. 70 degrees right now as we're kicking off the morning. Winds out of the southeast around 13 miles per hour. And you notice we do have a few splotches of green showing up on radar. Remember, drizzle is hard to see on radar. Doesn't mean it's not happening. And that means you could see some on your way into work or school this morning. Don't be surprised if you do encounter that. It's nothing that's going to be heavy. And unfortunately, that also means it won't add up in our rain gauge as well. Cloud cover trying to work on over again. Today is going to start off cloudy, but by afternoon, I think we'll see some sunshine and we'll see some warmer temperatures along with the winds that are out there as well. Upper 60s, lower 70s as we're kicking off the day. We'll keep those temperatures on the warmer side here. And as we get into the afternoon, see some of that breaks in the sunshine that will push our temperatures up into the mid to upper 80s. It is going to be a toasty one with that south wind blowing around 15 to 25 miles per hour and expect another similar day coming up on Thursday and even another similar day on Friday as well. Not going to roll out a shower each of those days, although I think the better chance will be this morning. It's still only about a 20% chance. Future track winds keeping you around that 20 to 30 mile per hour range today. A little bit lighter tomorrow, but still on the stronger side. So be prepared for a stretch of gusty days here as we go through the rest of the week. Rain chances remain rather low. Till we get into Sunday and Monday, that's when our next best chance of storms comes in with a little weak cold front that's going to come through. That'll bring us some widespread showers and thunderstorms, thankfully, but uh, amounts generally look less than an inch at this time. 84 today, 87 tomorrow, 87 on Friday. We'll be at 88 on Saturday. Here comes that best chance of rain Sunday into Monday, and we do get a little bit of a temperature drop behind that front, upper 70s to kick off the work week. Back in the mid to upper 80s, though, as we round out next week, getting back towards Wednesday, 
Thursday and Friday next week could be approaching the upper 80s once again. You look around and you know, these places are, are pretty special in my, in my opinion. For many, the beach is a place of peace. It's vacation. But our beaches are much more than a getaway. They're a refuge for wildlife and home to a multi-billion dollar tourism industry in the United States. I mean, anything that we can do to preserve them or conserve them uh, is, is something that I, I think should be done. Jordan Byram has dedicated his career to keeping the beaches in his home state thriving. We have 69 reefs uh, throughout North Carolina. His biggest project, building new reefs using stuff that otherwise would be thrown away. Concrete pipe is a, is a very commonly used reef material in North Carolina and elsewhere on the Atlantic and in the Gulf states. For the marine environment, they don't contain you know, contaminants or oil or grease, anything like that that's gonna pollute the environment. They're also inexpensive. Sometimes it's free. Millions of tons of concrete pipe is thrown away every year by transportation departments across the country. Jordan's team is keeping that out of the landfill and putting it into the ocean. He shared this video of the reef habitat the concrete eventually will create. The marine life grows on the concrete really, really well, and it's kind of a win-win for everybody. These new concrete reefs will bring fishing opportunities to areas that need them and protect the shoreline when storms come in. They'll actually reduce some of the wave action that's up next to shorelines and, and reduce erosion or prevent erosion. All these reefs, both natural and man-made, make a huge impact. The U.S. Geological Survey estimates reefs in the United States save Americans $1.8 billion every year by stopping flooding damage. Reefs also generate thousands of jobs and $100 million each year for the tourism industry through things like fishing trips and diving excursions. Putting materials at reef sites uh, ultimately you know, benefits you know, all of these communities uh, because of just the sheer number of people that come here to visit. In recent decades, more than half of living coral reefs around the world have shrunk or have been damaged. In the last few years, Jordan and his team have created dozens of reefs along the East Coast, even seeking a Coast Guard ship to create a reef where people can now fish. You know, I get to go home at the end of the day and feel like I have you know, accomplished something, there's something tangible. You know, we put something in the water. Um, and you know, other people can go and then enjoy that and utilize that. It's really nice. He's now helping other states across the country start their own reef projects like this because by giving new life to tons of trash, it will build something we can all treasure. I'm Alexa Liaco. When we come back, an ongoing problem in Texas education may be getting worse. How new rules may affect teachers wanting to leave the industry. The details after the break. I've had the privilege of meeting Gloria Kennard. She is an activist in this community. It's been a little over 23 years that she's been hosting this Thanksgiving event, and it's just really beautiful the way that she touches all those souls and makes everyone happy within the community just by giving them a plate of food on Thanksgiving. She also coordinates many other events, and she just loves to help her community and uplift those individuals around her. It was just so beautiful to meet her and hear her story. Despite a teacher shortage, the number of teachers losing their certifications are growing. According to the Texas Tribune, the number of teachers who leave in the middle of the school year is up 60% from 258 to nearly 500. School districts can report teachers who break their contracts to the state. The State Board for, Educa for Educator Certification can then suspend certifications for a year. Meanwhile, former President Donald Trump is bringing the American Freedom Tour to Austin. According to its website, Trump will be joined by several other conservatives on Saturday, May 14th at the Austin Convention Center. Tickets range from $9 for overflow seats to more than $3,000. And today marks the 23rd anniversary of the Columbine High School shooting. On April 20th, 1999, two teens gunned down 12 students and one teacher in Littleton, Colorado. After that, they took their own lives. It was one of the deadly, deadliest incidents of school violence in U.S. history. 
Turning now to the war in Ukraine, as Russia launches a major new offensive, we're learning that more help from the U.S. is on the way. Dion Lim has the latest. Sources confirm the White House plans to announce another major weapons delivery to Ukraine as soon as this week. The new aid package could be similar to the $800 million package President Biden announced just last week, which included howitzer missiles, switchblade drones, and armored Humvees. The Pentagon Tuesday would not say what type of weapons could be included this time. You have to do this smartly, and that means doing it in, in chunks and phases based on what their needs are in the moment. It would be irresponsible for us not to do it that way. A U.S. defense official says the U.S. and other countries have now given Ukraine 70,000 anti-tank weapons and 30,000 shoulder-fired anti-aircraft missiles. The official believes the Russians will be targeting roads in western Ukraine, being used to ship those weapons farther into the country. It all comes as Russia declares a new phase in the war, stepping up attacks in the country's eastern industrial heartland. Ukrainian authorities say Russia is now dropping heavy bombs on this sprawling steel plant in the port city of Mariupol, where thousands of Ukrainian troops have refused to surrender. This farmer's land is not far from the eastern front lines. He showed ABC's James Longman the missile he towed away after it landed in his field. He tends to his crops in his fortified tractor, wearing a flak jacket and helmet. Your tractor is your tank. Yes, we're risking our lives, he says, but we have to do it. In his daily address, Ukrainian President Zelensky called Russia's military the most barbaric in the world for targeting civilians. Dion Lim, ABC News, New York. The Bridge Ministry's food pantry has prioritized building relationships within the Bryan community since it opened back in 2010. Now it expanded its focus in the hopes to help provide humanitarian aid for people in Ukraine. The pantry has set a goal toward raising $10,000 for this mission, as well as pledging to match funds up to $5,000 in this campaign. While federal student loan payments are paused, there's lots of talk about what should come next for student loans. We're seeing more interest and availability now around income share agreements or ISAs. Consumer advocates are warning these may come with unfair terms and unforeseen costs. If you have both a federal student loan and an ISA, you could pay as much as 25% of your discretionary income in repayment for a decade. That's according to a recently released report from the nonprofit Center for Responsible Lending. ISAs have you make payments in exchange for a percentage of your future earnings for a mixed number of years. Your major and projected income are used to come up with the terms of the agreement. The report finds that could lead to negative impacts for women and people of color. We know that majors in college are stratified. They're stratified by race, they're stratified by gender, and they're stratified by income. A white male student with family wealth is far more likely to go into engineering than a young black female student who is a first generation college student. She's more likely to go into something like teaching or social work that makes less money down the road. Many of these agreements are run by colleges, sometimes with private capital sources. Some are offered by private lenders. ISA providers say their products aren't loans. Federal regulators are starting to see them that way. The Department of Education and Consumer Financial Protection Bureau are looking into the agreements. The CFPB already says several of the products are private loans and have to be regulated like that. So by classifying it as a loan, you're going to get things like an interest rate agreement. Uh, you're going to get things like an APR disclosure telling you what you're annually going to be paying on that loan. And you'll get things like an amortization table that's going to show you month by month what you can be expected to pay. Along with regulation on ISAs, the Center for Responsible Lending is pushing for reducing interest rates on federal student loans. Coming up, mask confusion continues. Why we might have to prepare ourselves to mask back up after restrictions eased. This KRHD maintains a public inspection file available online at krhdnews.com or at our studio, 1909 South New Road, Waco, Texas, 7671, within regular business hours. 
New mask freedoms might not last too long. The Justice Department says it could appeal a federal judge's ruling that struck down the Biden administration's transportation mask mandate. It says it's letting the CDC decide what happens next. A new subvariant of Omicron may be a determining factor here. As Amy Kiley reports, it spreads even faster than BA2. Actually, the battle over the federal public transportation mask mandate might not be over yet. The Justice Department says it's deferring to the CDC about appealing a federal judge's ruling that struck down the measure Monday. Should people continue to wear masks on planes? That's up to them. The CDC had wanted the mandate in place until at least May 3rd while it determined if it was still needed. It's a horrible time uh, to lift uh, the mandate. Experts say it's important to remember COVID-19 is still deadly. Omicron has killed about 150,000 people. In an average year with a seasonal virus like the flu, we lose somewhere between 30 to 50,000 people. Officials say a new sub-lineage of BA2 spreads about 25% faster than the original sub-variant. Together, they make up almost all new COVID-19 cases in the U.S. Experts also point out people can't always social distance when traveling together. If someone's not wearing a mask, even if you're wearing a very high quality mask like this, an N95 mask, they're infected. You have about an hour, hour and 15 minutes of protection. But people who aren't health experts might be considering other factors. I feel more protected when people are wearing masks, though the enforcement of it causes a lot of antagonistic situations. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more smiles. Amy Kiley, KRHD News. And as the mask mandate lifts, United Airlines now says it will allow passengers banned for not following mask rules to fly again on a case-by-case -case basis. Since the start of the pandemic, United has banned about a thousand flyers for refusing to follow the mandate. In a statement, the airline said it will let some banned passengers fly after, quote, ensuring their commitment to follow all crew member instructions on board. Meanwhile, ride-sharing companies Uber and Lyft are also lifting their mask requirements. However, even with COVID cases at a much lower rate, some drivers say they're not happy about the change. As much as I care about the passenger, I also care about my health condition as well. So it makes me feel uncomfortable. Anywhere where you're going to be in, in close contact is always, you know, a safe a safe measure, um, but you can also um, consider your own risk, whether you're vaccinated, unvaccinated, um, whether you have any underlying health conditions, um, those kinds of things. The new mask rules for ride shares are effective immediately. Well, good morning. It is setting up to be a very breezy day here across the Brazos Valley out there right now. You can tell that humidity has worked in. And in some cases, we are dealing with a little bit of drizzle, so don't be surprised if you see some of that. That view being brought to us by our Clark Roofing Cam there in Bryan. Look at the low cloud cover that's worked in. That humidity is on the increase. Now, I'll continue here as we go through the day. 70 degrees right now as we're kicking off the morning. Winds out of the southeast around 13 miles per hour. And you notice we do have a few splotches of green showing up on radar. Remember, drizzle is hard to see on radar. Doesn't mean it's not happening. And that means you could see some on your way into work or school this morning. Don't be surprised if you do encounter that. It's nothing that's going to be heavy. And unfortunately, that also means it won't add up in our rain gauge as well. Cloud cover trying to work on over again. Today is going to start off cloudy, but by afternoon, I think we'll see some sunshine and we'll see some warmer temperatures along with the winds that are out there as well. Upper 60s, lower 70s as we're kicking off the day. We'll keep those temperatures on the warmer side here. And as we get in the afternoon, see some of that breaks in the sunshine that will push our temperatures up into the mid to upper 80s. It is going to be a toasty one with that south wind blowing around 15 to 25 miles per hour and expect another similar day coming up on Thursday and even another similar day on Friday as well. Not going to roll out a shower each of those days, although I think the better chance will be this morning. It's still only about a 20% chance. Future track winds keeping you around that 20 to 30 mile per hour range today. A little bit lighter tomorrow, but still on the stronger side. So be prepared for a stretch of gusty days here as we go through the rest of the week. Rain chances remain rather low till we get into Sunday and Monday. That's when our next best chance of storms comes in with a little weak cold front that's going to come through. That'll bring us some widespread showers and thunderstorms, thankfully, but 
uh, amounts generally look less than an inch at this time. 84 today, 87 tomorrow, 87 on Friday. We'll be at 88 on Saturday. Here comes that best chance of rain Sunday into Monday. And we do get a little bit of a temperature drop behind that front. Upper 70s to kick off the work week. Back in the mid to upper 80s, though, as we round out next week, getting back towards Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And next week could be approaching the upper 80s once again. Stick around, Brazos Alley. We have plenty more news and weather updates for you this morning when Good Morning Texas continues in just a few minutes. This story was kind of like a labor of love. I came across it on Facebook. Jordan's mom was sharing her story and trying to get the community together to host a end of treatment celebration. Unfortunately, that got rained out, and so I thought it would be a really good idea to make this a really big surprise for Jordan. So I got in contact with Patricia, Jordan's mom, and we coordinated with Johnny Carinos to rent out a room and really make this a big special day for Jordan. Honestly, we couldn't have done it any better. Johnny Carinos gave 15% of all their proceeds in one day of sale to Jordan and her family to use in Disney World. The community really wanted to make sure that Jordan felt special in this moment, but also because of everything that she's accomplished. She beat her fight in cancer, beating her fight against leukemia, and now she gets to celebrate with her family and those closest to her. You know, it doesn't even end here. Patricia has reorganized the end of treatment celebration, and soon the community will come together and be able to rejoice with Jordan in person. Three, two, one. You're going to Disney! I think it was just really cool to be a part of that moment and really be a part of creating that moment too, to see Jordan walk through the door, but know what all took place before that moment and hearing everybody scream, you're going to Disney! Like, it was so great. This is KRHD News and these are your stories. Governor Greg Abbott filling local and state loopholes nearly six months after the Astro World Music Festival tragedy. Plus, a controversial policy slimming down state troopers. The repercussions some will face if their waste isn't where the department wants it to be. And looking to buy a home? Multiple offers and high prices may be the least of your problems. It's Wednesday, April 20th. Good Morning Texas continues right now. Connecting the Brazos Valley. This is Good Morning Texas. Governor Abbott's task force on concert safety is releasing its final reports nearly six months after Houston's Astroworld Music Festival tragedy. Now, in that report, statewide experts say loopholes in city and state law need to be tightened up. Also, emergency officials need more control over events with large crowds. Specifically, the report says they should have the ability to shut down events in life-threatening situations. And after the Astroworld tragedy, one filmmaker has set out to create a documentary capturing the event from the perspective of con concert goers. Through interviews and live footage, the doc aims to tell the story of the event that took the lives of 10 individuals, including a Texas A&M engineering student. Concert Crush will open across Texas beginning Friday, April 29th, with screenings at Premier Cinema in Bryan. Former state senator Wendy Davis has filed a lawsuit challenging Texas's controversial abortion law. Davis, best known for her 13-hour filibuster that stalled a previous abortion law back in 2013, calls the current law, quote, blatantly unconstitutional. Her lawsuit says the law violates plaintiffs' rights to due process and freedom of speech. Davis saying she is, quote, asking the courts to stop the unconstitutional harassment of abortion funds by confirming SB 8 cannot be used to silence donors with bogus threats. Meanwhile, a controversial policy asks some Texas state troopers to slim down or face disciplinary action. The policy states that men with waists over 40 inches and women over 35 inches will be required to start a new weight loss program. Just over 200 officers failed those requirements out of 4,000 that were tested. 
Those that fail to trim down by December, even if they pass all other health requirements, face being denied promotions, overtime, or even complete removal from duties. Texas DPS is defending the policy, saying a slim waistline is needed for a commanding presence. Don't count on cheap gas for your summer travel. Prices at the pump are on the rise yet again. Gas prices had been falling slowly over the past several weeks after Russia's invasion into Ukraine sent them spiking last month. Experts warn uncertainty in Ukraine and typical price increases seen during the summer driving season could continue to put upward pressure on fuel prices. Meanwhile, Netflix is losing subscribers for the first time in nearly a decade. Analysts expected Netflix to add about 2.5 million new subscribers in the first months of 2022. Instead, it lost about 200,000. The news set Netflix shares spiraling, losing 25% of their value. In the wake of the news, Netflix says they're planning to open a lower price tier with ads in the near future. The CEO says he remains a fan of a simple subscription, but also believes in giving customers the choice to pay a lower price to use the service. People who receive Social Security checks are on track to get the biggest cost of living raise in four decades. The Senior Citizens League estimated the adjustment could be as high as 8.9% next year based on recent inflation data. That would mark the steepest annual adjustment since 1981. The Social Security Administration will release the final adjustment percentage in October. Are you thinking of buying a new home? Well, it's not just high prices and multiple offers making things so tough right now. Consumer reporter John Matteris shows us how soaring interest rates are now making buying nearly impossible for some families so you don't waste your money. This sign, bummer, pending, pretty much sums up the housing market in 2022. Home buyer Nicole Bouchard has spent four months looking and losing house after house to other couples. I felt a little hopeless because um, houses were going before we could even see them. But now she and other buyers have a bigger problem. Mortgage rates that have soared from three and a half to five percent since last year. If the cost of the house in general is still inflated and rising interest rates, you know, what would we be able to afford? It's so frustrating for buyers who've been coping with bidding wars and so few homes for sale. Now they have to deal with rising mortgage rates, which is putting even more homes out of reach. It has the fireplace, it has these beautiful built-ins. Realtor Michelle Sloan worries about some of her buyers giving up unable to afford a home like this one that she's just put on the market. The rise in mortgage rates will force a lot of buyers out of the market because they won't be able to afford what they thought. So if they thought they could afford a $300,000 home, maybe now they can only afford a $250,000 loan. She says home buyers should lock in the lowest 30-year rate you can find. Consider a three or five-year adjustable mortgage or arm, but realize the rate could jump sharply after that. And save up as much cash as you can for a down payment. One bright side of rising rates, Michelle says they should eventually give buyers more homes to choose from as the market cools. And I didn't think inventory could get any lower, but it has. And for frustrated buyers like Nicole, she says find a good buyer's agent to help you. A good agent has to be available to their buyers 24-7. That way you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. Well, good morning. It is setting up to be a very breezy day here across the Brazos Valley out there right now. You can tell that humidity has worked in. And in some cases, we are dealing with a little bit of drizzle, so don't be surprised if you see some of that. That view being brought to us by our Clark Roofing Cam there in Bryan. Look at the low cloud cover that's worked in. That humidity is on the increase. Now, I'll continue here as we go through the day. 70 degrees right now as we're kicking off the morning. Winds out of the southeast around 13 miles per hour. And you notice we do have a few splotches of green showing up on radar. Remember, drizzle is hard to see on radar. Doesn't mean it's not happening. And that means you could see some on your way into work or school this morning. Don't be surprised if you do encounter that. It's nothing that's going to be heavy. And unfortunately, that also means it won't add up in our rain gauge as well. Cloud cover trying to work on over again. Today is going to start off cloudy, but by afternoon, I think we'll see some sunshine and we'll see some warmer temperatures along with the winds that are out there as well. Upper 60s, lower 70s as we're kicking off the day. We'll keep those temperatures on the warmer side here. And as we get in the afternoon, see some of that breaks in the sunshine that will push our temperatures up into the mid to upper 80s. 
Rockies. It is going to be a toasty one with that south wind blowing around 15 to 25 miles per hour and expect another similar day coming up on Thursday and even another similar day on Friday as well. Not going to roll out a shower each of those days, although I think the better chance will be this morning. It's still only about a 20% chance. Future track winds keeping you around that 20 to 30 mile per hour range today. A little bit lighter tomorrow, but still on the stronger side. So be prepared for a stretch of gusty days here as we go through the rest of the week. Rain chances remain rather low till we get into Sunday and Monday. That's when our next best chance of storms comes in with a little weak cold front that's going to come through. That'll bring us some widespread showers and thunderstorms, thankfully, but uh, amounts generally look less than an inch at this time. 84 today, 87 tomorrow, 87 on Friday. We'll be at 88 on Saturday. Here comes that best chance of rain Sunday into Monday, and we do get a little bit of a temperature drop behind that front. Upper 70s to kick off the work week. Back in the mid to upper 80s, though, as we round out next week, getting back towards Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And next week could be approaching the upper 80s once again. It was just nice to have someone voluntarily be like, I can help you. We can get through this together. I 100% support you. And that's what the Suits for Seniors team leaders did, definitely. Suiting up future leaders for lifelong success. Some South Florida high school seniors will walk away with even more tools to help them launch a career. The Suits for Seniors program pairs students with a free custom tailored suit so they're dressed for success. They're also paired with mentors who help motivate them post-graduation. We expose them to careers and professionals and mentors that they we know they would have never met without our program. We learn about doing taxes, banking, things like that that you usually do not go over in high school. Going from middle school to high school can be scary and nerve-wracking for some students. Now a new program is helping Cleveland students navigate that transition with the help of their peers. The Inspiring Eagles program teaches juniors and seniors how to mentor their freshman mentees. Motivation is 100% through peer approval. And I think our peers motivating other peers, especially students who have kind of been through the ropes to say, or some of our older upperclassmen, able to work with our younger classmen and just kind of help them through things that maybe going to adults they just don't feel as comfortable to do. Mentors and mentees meet during study hall and lunch periods to talk, guide, and get much needed advice about navigating high school. I just want them to make an effort into like coming into school and like trying to have fun, you know, be the best versions of them. There's a growing trend in rural America. People are building barn dominiums, and it's exactly what it sounds like, barn mixed with condominium. And the idea is that you're building a customized open concept house, and the trend is likely here to stay. At Worldwide Steel Buildings in Peculiar, Missouri, steel structure kits are put together and shipped out from coast to coast. So this is our manufacturing facility. We produce around 30 to 35,000 pounds of steel a day. Wow, there's a lot going on in here. Jeff Snell is the CEO who bought the company in 2016. Uh, since 2016, our business has grown 300%, and over half of our sales are now Barnuminiums. According to Barnuminium Life, an online resource that teaches people about building Barnuminiums, the popularity of this style of home can be attributed to Chip and Joanna Gaines, who coined the word on their show Fixer Upper. It's not just a cookie cutter home that you put in the subdivision, it's a lifestyle choice to be out in the country and live in a Barnuminium. I hadn't heard of it until my sister Victoria told me she was thinking of building one. How did you first hear about Barnuminiums? I think we just started researching like ways to make a custom home that would be more affordable because like construction costs are very high right now, lumber costs are really high right now. And so we were like, we're just going to have to get creative. Interested in starting her own horse therapy practice, Victoria says the Barnuminium style would be very ideal. Snell says Barndos are a favorite among people with outdoor lifestyles. We see people finish off, you know, a third of their building and then have the, the remaining of the building for all their toys, boats, RVs, four-wheelers, golf cart. With vaulted ceilings and an open concept, Jeff says the inside of a Barndo is a blank canvas. Walking this way, this is going to be our pantry. Morgan Ropke and her husband are building a barnuminium near Springfield, Missouri. It is a 2,800 square foot home with an 800 square foot garage. 
We started building in August and we hope to finish in the next month or so. Morgan says she and her husband were attracted to the open concept and rural aesthetic of a Barnuminium. We want to have our friends and family over. We want to do cookouts and we want to do bonfires and we want to have parties here. She says they really value time with family. My mom and dad's house will be right there where you see the construction happening. Oh my gosh. So they literally could be like, maybe. You know, oh. so. How sweet. Yeah. Morgan says she has spent years researching Barnuminiums to become a self-contractor. She also remodeled their last house. But she wants people to know anyone can build a barn dough if they have the knowledge and motivation. That's why she now offers a course to other people who want to be a DIY home builder. I do think that because it made it easier for us to self-contract, that made us a lot of money. If we had gone the traditional route and been forced to use a general contractor, then it would have been far more expensive, probably 30% more expensive. Some Barnuminiums are all wood, others all steel, and Morgan's is a hybrid between the two. Jeff says demand for these types of homes is growing, and he thinks that demand will continue. We see our customers, you know, younger couples first starting out for their starter homes uh, using steel buildings, but we see a lot of retirement couples too. You know, they want to retire to the country on 10 or 15 acres. Morgan says she, her husband, and her four kids are super happy with how their barn dominium has turned out. She even let her little girls paint their own rooms. This is our house. We built this house so hands-on, and it is us. I'm Elizabeth Ruiz reporting. Medical debt is a plague for millions of Americans draining bank accounts and holding many back from even buying a home. But one local youth group is partnering with a health agency to get people some help. KRHD News reporter Diamond Dixon has the story. The youth group at Friends Congregational Church went on a mission trip last summer. It inspired their efforts to create a medical debt relief program here in the Brazos Valley. Senior Pastor Dan DeLeon shares about the church's mission trip. And they were compelled by something that they learned, which was how easy it can be to forgive medical debt by working with a nonprofit called RIP Medical Debt based in New York. They found out that they could buy up medical debt for pennies on the dollar and simply forgive it. The youth group wanted to find a way to help ease medical debt in the community, so the Brazos Valley Medical Debt Forgiveness Fund was born. They received donations um, very quickly, and that prompted them to say, you know what, let's raise the goal to 30000 And they hit that a few weeks ago, so they said, let's raise it to 40000 And they hit that a few days ago, so now they have raised the goal to $50,000, hoping to hit that. Uh, by the end of the week. The youth group is excited to get out the word about their early success. And one of the ways that they were showing their progress was by creating this giant syringe. And every week they could go in front of the congregation and they could mark, this is how much more we've raised and this is how much more we've raised. And then eventually it just went beyond the top. Pastor Delion reminds us how medical debt impacts so many lives. That burden is placed on people who uh, nine times out of ten can either spend their whole life paying off that debt or never be able to pay it off and either way are stuck in um, cyclical poverty, having to choose between buying groceries for their family and their household or paying off medical debt that seems to never go away. The youth group is planning to hit their new goal of $50,000 and wrap up their campaign at their weekend event Spring Fling where you can also help donate. Reporting in College Station, Diamond Dixon, Care HD News. America's rivers connect the country, providing most Americans and businesses with a supply of fresh water. Unfortunately, our rivers are facing significant crisis. The environmental group American Rivers unveiled its annual list of the most endangered rivers, and the trouble spans the entire country. Rivers from coast to coast, and border to border are endangered. This year's list includes the Tar Creek in Oklahoma, the Los Angeles River, Arizona San Pedro River, the Lower Kern River in California, the mighty Mississippi River, the Coosa River in the southeastern U.S., Maine's Atlantic Salmon Rivers, the Mobile River in Alabama, and the Snake River in the Pacific Northwest. And the most endangered river, the Colorado River, which might not be that big of a surprise. 
The Colorado River provides water for 40 million Americans, or at least it's supposed to. The mega drought gripping the western United States has dramatically reduced the river's inflow, combined with the demands of people and farms. The situation on the Colorado River is, is not good right now. Um, water levels are low, shortages are starting. The drought is the worst in 1,200 years. The group behind the list says that's a big part of the problem, but it also blames outdated water management policies. The Colorado does not make it to the end of the Gulf of Mexico. It dries up. The river feeds the Lake Powell Reservoir, which is at historically low levels and just a few feet away from shutting down the Glen Canyon Dam, which means less water for communities up and down the river. Coming up, a creepy crawler celebrity. How this leggy bug is making its debut as a Swifty. The details after the break. A scientist from Virginia Tech honored his favorite pop star in an interesting way. He named a new species after her. So what if it lives in dirt and has dozens of legs? Meet the swift twisted claw millipede. That's right, the mysterious arthropod is named after Taylor Swift. It's one of 16 new species named by a team of researchers in a newly published paper. Lead scientist Derek Hennon says Look, listening to Taylor Swift helped get him through medical graduate school rather, so he felt it appropriate to name one of his discoveries after her. The millipede is also only found in Tennessee where Taylor Swift grew up. So far, Swift hasn't commented on what she thinks of her leggy namesake. Well, good morning. It is setting up to be a very breezy day here across the Brazos Valley out there right now. You can tell that humidity has worked in. And in some cases, we are dealing with a little bit of drizzle, so don't be surprised if you see some of that. That view being brought to us by our Clark Roofing Cam there in Bryan. Look at the low cloud cover that's worked in. That humidity is on the increase. Now, I'll continue here as we go through the day. 70 degrees right now as we're kicking off the morning. Winds out of the southeast around 13 miles per hour. And you notice we do have a few splotches of green showing up on radar. Remember, drizzle is hard to see on radar. Doesn't mean it's not happening. And that means you could see some on your way into work or school this morning. Don't be surprised if you do encounter that. It's nothing that's going to be heavy. And unfortunately, that also means it won't add up in our rain gauge as well. Cloud cover trying to work on over again. Today is going to start off cloudy, but by afternoon, I think we'll see some sunshine and we'll see some warmer temperatures along with the winds that are out there as well. Upper 60s, lower 70s as we're kicking off the day. We'll keep those temperatures on the warmer side here. And as we get in the afternoon, see some of that breaks in the sunshine that will push our temperatures up into the mid to upper 80s. It is going to be a toasty one with that south wind blowing around 15 to 25 miles per hour and expect another similar day coming up on Thursday and even another similar day on Friday as well. Not going to roll out a shower each of those days, although I think the better chance will be this morning. It's still only about a 20% chance. Future track winds keeping you around that 20 to 30 mile per hour range today. A little bit lighter tomorrow, but still on the stronger side. So be prepared for a stretch of gusty days here as we go through the rest of the week. Rain chances remain rather low. Till we get into Sunday and Monday, that's when our next best chance of storms comes in with a little weak cold front that's going to come through. That'll bring us some widespread showers and thunderstorms, thankfully, but uh, amounts generally look less than an inch at this time. 84 today, 87 tomorrow, 87 on Friday. We'll be at 88 on Saturday. Here comes that best chance of rain Sunday into Monday, and we do get a little bit of a temperature drop behind that front. Upper 70s to kick off the work week. Back in the mid to upper 80s, though, as we round out next week, getting back towards Wednesday. Thursday and Friday and next week could be approaching the upper 80s once again. Thanks for joining us this morning on Good Morning Texas. We'll be back later at 1130 with more news and weather. Until then, though, have a great rest of your Wednesday morning.